I was at a coin dealer in Phoenix, Arizona, and he related a story about a scam. I don't know if it's a fable or if it actually happened, but I can see something like that happening. He related that 20 years ago, uh, you have to be careful buying platinum coins because some people would counterfeit platinum coins with gold because gold is relatively easy to work with. It has the right density. And if you don't know what you're looking for, you test the density, which is probably the most obvious thing an average person could do. And it will, it will pass, right? Now, it got me thinking, in 2000, if you got suckered into buying such a platinum coin, and then fast forward 20 years later, you want to go sell that coin, and you discover you've been ripped off, but now your coin's worth twice as much as you were thinking of selling it for. It got me thinking who loses in that transaction. It seems like everybody's m more better off than they thought they were, right? In 2000, that platinum coin that you bought for four, five hundred, six hundred dollars maybe, the scammer counterfeited it with $300 worth of gold. And in 2021, you think you can get $900 for that coin, you end up getting $1,800, right? But that's what a market is, right? Everybody gets a better thing than they trade what they traded for, right? That's why people will conduct business, right? And it got me thinking about um, how do we look at what to buy in the coming uh, years and decades, right? So obviously, both gold and platinum have appreciated relative to the dollar, but that's because the dollar has been losing a lot of value, right? So my favorite way of looking at this is to look at ratios, right? And here we can see the price of platinum divided by the price of gold. Right now it's about a half. And historically, if we can go back to the maximum, 1990-92. So, so if, if we start in 1990, we had a recession in the early 90s, we had one in the late 90s, and it wasn't until very recent times has everybody flooded into gold for, for some bizarre reason, right? Platinum is about 15 times rarer than gold in the Earth's crust, and we're actually using platinum at a much faster rate than gold, right? The other piece of trivia about platinum is that I suspect we might return to a platinum standard rather than a gold standard, because think about our adversaries around the world, right? They all have a lot of gold. The last thing we want to do is to empower them to actually use their reserves, right? Which is why we were thinking about creating a trillion dollar platinum coin, not a gold coin. There's also uh, constitutional limits to the face values we can put on gold and silver coins, right? And there doesn't seem to be one for platinum. And given how much we like to worship the Constitution, I think that's a significant deal. Now, we can also look at platinum relative to other metals, right? So this is platinum to gold. It's at a all-time historic low. Well, the last time it was this low was before platinum was even recognized, right? you got to remember, platinum was initially thought of as uh, an impurity to gold and silver ore, right? So that was... Uh, 200 years ago that we have to go back before platinum was this low in value relative to gold. Now let's look at the platinum to silver ratio. This is actually silver divided by platinum, so you got to flip that around in your head. And we are right here, right? This is obviously during the pandemic. I remember the first day of that lockdown. I remember seeing platinum being 500 something. I so badly wanted to buy 20 ounces of platinum. I naively sent the order in and within a couple minutes I get an email saying that there it's going to be months before it comes in. And so I settled for buying a thousand ounces of silver instead. And you can see how much platinum I lost because I wasn't willing to wait two months and put potentially have that order be cancelled. Right? That That's how powerful this ratio, the, the information from this ratio can tell you. Right? So let's go back to the all-time charts, and here we are, right? What, what, what we really want to watch for is th this uh, head and shoulders patterns that's forming, right? It's really difficult to do technical analysis on uh, the dollar price of the precious metals because you'll never know if what you're witnessing is the dollar changing value, which is arbitrary, right? Which is politically controlled versus whether it's the intrinsic value of the metals. By taking the ratio 
of prices of metals, we've kind of neutralized the effects of currency, right? I can't tell you how many times I'll do astrology or technical analysis, and it shows the metals wanting to go up in one currency, down in the other, all over the place, right? With the ratios, you'll never have run into that problem. Now let's look at my favorite ratio is actually palladium to platinum. And you'll see why in a second. If we zoom all the way out, this is, uh, how many years does this go? Oh, this only goes back to, unfortunately, 1990. But if you go back even further, uh, it has a 20 year or so cycle. And I suspect uh, palladium does well when Jupiter and Saturn are close to conjunction. And when they are 180 degrees apart in the sky, it's platinum that's the big winner. So over the next 10 years, as Jupiter and Saturn gets further and further apart, I expect platinum to rise five or six times relative to palladium, right? Here, that's a 4x climb. This is a 10x climb, right? And if you can just make four of these swing trades in your career, uh, you could potentially multiply your stack by 100 times. So getting back to the story, who won, who lost in that platinum and gold uh, situation. They both won, right? You just need to keep trading back and forth, right? The people who are holding gold and platinum throughout an entire lifetime are the real losers.